the law stands and you just, just hope Allah is more merciful. Right? Like all of us today, we are like in a system filled with sins. There's no two ways about it. Right? There is no two ways about it. What are we going to say? The law is not applicable anymore? Never. We will never say that. Our Shaykh and Habib Amr always says, you, we never say the law is no longer applicable. But you do hope that Allah has more mercy. Why? Because Allah says, in the matter of Sirius, in the matter of Sirius, in the matter of Sirius, with difficulty there's ease, with that same difficulty there's a second ease. We say, hopefully, that He will be more lenient to us. But the law still stands, and we still have to lower our gaze, we still have to not lie, we still have to not take interest, we still have to do all these things uh, that uh, are in, in our sacred law. The next one. our link to the Prophet, peace be upon him, even after his death. When you take an action, do not say, I only seek to please Allah. Your goal is to please Allah and His Messenger. We retain a link to the Prophet, peace be upon him, even after his death. Allah says in Surah At-Tawbah 962, He says, وَاللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ أَحَقُّ أَنْ يُرْضُوهُ إِنْ كَانُوا مُؤْمِنِينَ وَاللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ أَحَقُّ أَنْ يُرْضُوهُ إِنْ كَانُوا مُؤْمِنِينَ If they are true believers, then it is more worthy for them to try to please God and His Messenger. Why not God alone? Allah knows we are human beings. We are human beings. Allah is categorically beyond us. He is divine. We cannot fathom how he is. We know his attributes. We know what he told us about himself. But to know that there is a human as well that we don't worship, but we try to please. The Sahaba, when they died, they would always ask the Prophet, have I pleased God and his messenger? Are you di am I dying while you are pleased with me? And the Prophet said, yes, I am pleased with you. Okay? I am pleased with you. Right? A son... A son will never go to Jannah unless his mother and his father are pleased with him. Right? With the mother having three shares of the value of her anger than the father. Right? The, the anger of a mother. Not just the anger. Just she's not happy with her son. Of course there are some clauses, by the way. It's not just absolute because there are some abusive moms. Okay? Her anger is three times heavier than the anger of the father. Right? Because she's done three times the work. Right? So, likewise, if you are from the Ummah of a Prophet, you must die and that Prophet must be pleased with you. So the Sahaba used to live seeking to please the Prophet, peace be upon him. And we live seeking to please the Prophet, peace be upon him. So you know your Prophet. And you, now, the question comes, how is it that I can please a Prophet and he is dead and he doesn't know I am here and he doesn't know we exist? We tell you, in that statement, there's an error. And this is the next point. The next point is for you to believe about the Prophet ﷺ, that he knows you and sees your actions. This is our part of our belief. He knows who you are and he knows your actions. Okay? The hadith says, my life is good for you and my death is good for you. As for my life, you speak and you are spoken to. And as for my death, your deeds are shown to me. If I see good, I thank Allah. If I see other than good, other than that, I seek refuge for I seek forgiveness for you. While as a Muslim is sinning, his Prophet is seeking forgiveness for him. The Prophet, peace be upon him, is not dead the death of a normal person. The death of the Prophet ﷺ is his movement from this life to a more superior life in which he has more influence upon us by his praying for us by his having greater knowledge. In, the t in his life, in this world, there were things the Prophet ﷺ did not know. In the life of the Barzakh realm, in which he is now, he has greater knowledge than he had in this life. He has greater knowledge about his ummatis in this life. In his life in this world, he knew what he saw and what Jibreel told him. In his life in the next life, Allah is showing him all the deeds of his ummah. Collectively and individually, men by name. This is for you to know that you have a spiritual link with the Prophet, peace be upon him, and it manifests in the next hadith. مَنْ سَلَّمَ عَلَيَّ 
رَدَّ اللَّهُ عَلَيَّ رُوحِي فَأَرُدَّ عَلَيْهِ السَّلَامُ Whoever sends salah and salam upon me. Every Thursday night, in other words, the night before Friday, Allah returns my soul to me so that I can hear your salam and return it to Him. Your voice upon saying the salam is given, shown to the Prophet and he's able to return the salam to you by name every Thursday night. It's collected and shown to him every Thursday night. So what kind of power is this? How many Muslims say salah and salam on the Prophet every day? How many are there? 1.5 billion. Let's say 0.2 billion. At one time during the week say the word sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Then that salah and salam is shown to the Prophet, is given to the Prophet and he responds to every single one of them. This is, I mean, human beings create, a, they're creating now a supercomputer, right? Microsoft is now pouring its money into a supercomputer, which is basically like um, uh, f- four hard drives in the size of an iPod or an iPad. That's basically the strength of the, when they try to explain it. It's trying to fit the power of four hard drives in the size of an iPad. Of course, they're going to, you could do it. If you made the first one, why can't you make the supercomputer? If you made it, if you made the hard drive as is, it's not going to take too long before they figure out. And this computer will be so powerful, what it can do, right? The formulas that it could process and the algorithms that it can process, for us, basically has no limit, right? If a human being can make that, you think Allah Azza wa Jalla's power for His prophets is any less? That means His knowledge of billions of things to be processed all at once, right? So this is why we say His, capa- his capability, knowledge, and powers are even greater after His death than it was in this life. Part of this is in Surah Al-Duha. وَلَلْآخِرَةُ خَيْرٌ لَكَ مِنَ الْأُولَى A principle about the Prophet. He is in constant increase. In constant increase. What is to come is greater than what is present. Right? وَلَلْآخِرَةُ خَيْرٌ لَكَ مِنَ الْأُولَى What is to come is greater than what is present. Okay. Alright. This is about the Prophet, peace be upon him. Uh, that is the end of number three, prophecy. And only we have one more thing to go before we get into spirituality. That is Roman uh, number four, afterlife. Did it always be verse number four in the last one? He is in constant increase? The, uh, well, uh, Surah al I can't remember what it is. It's in the Juz Amma, one of the last surahs of the Quran. Maybe in the 90s or the 80s. The Akhirah for us, the afterlife, is a huge, huge part of our worldview. And this is part of our cosmology. Whenever we make a decision, we have just said, we have a God, we have a prophet, and we have a next life. No action should be taken by a believer without the consideration of these three things. Right? God, prophetic guidance, and afterlife. When we constantly think about afterlife, you're going to slowly start to change the way you live. Guaranteed. Your decision-making process. Modern Islamic activism, I've said this quote like a zillion times. I love this quote so much. A Turkish scholar said, modern Islamic activism is not about Allah anymore. It's not about God anymore. Modern Islamic activism is about leveraging Islam for the sake of our world, our dunya. This is what it's become. We've totally lost the plot. Five minutes? Okay. We've totally lost the plot. Modern Islamic activism, he says, is no longer about Allah. It should be, but it's not. We've made modern Islamic activism is to take Islam and see how it's going to make our world better, our dunya, so that we can enjoy our dunya better. Right? We don't make a decision with the afterlife in consideration. The afterlife is the driving force behind our decisions. And this life, we take consideration for it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَابْتَغِي فِي مَا أَتَاكَ اللَّهِ الدَّارُ الْآخِرَةِ 
وَلَا تَنْسَ نَصِيبَكَ مِنَ الدُّنْيَا He says, with everything God gave you, work for the afterlife, then do not forget your portion of this life. It's the opposite. You shouldn't say, I want to do this, but I need to know if it's, how do I make it a little bit beneficial for my afterlife. No, you do the opposite. Your entire worldview is driven for the afterlife. Then don't forget to enjoy the dunya a little bit. Don't forget to, 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 to save up enough for your dunya a little bit. Right? That's how it should be. All right. Lastly, on the same point, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says 19 times in the Quran, belief in Allah and the last day. Belief in Allah and the last day. Many people will think, all I need to do is believe in God in the last day, right? Many people th will think that. You should know that the phrase, belief in God in the last day, implies belief in God and His prophets and His books and His angels and the last day. The phrase, to believe in Allah and Yawm Al-Akhir, is short form for as Allah says in Surah 4, verse 136, An-Nisa, another ayah very important. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, aminu billahi wa rasulihi, wal kitab alladhi nazzal ala rasulihi. Okay, wal kitab alladhi anzal min qabl, and here it is. Wa man yakfur billah, and whoever rejects Allah, wa malaikatihi, wa kutubihi, wa rusulihi, wal yawm al-akhir. Whoever rejects Allah, and His angels, and His books, and His messengers, and the last day, he has gone far, far astray. So that you should know, whenever you hear the Prophet saying, whoever believes in Allah, whoever says, La ilaha illallah, or whoever believes in Allah and the last day, you have to know that this phrase, according to all of the ulama, is short form. It's a short form for belief in Allah and His books and His angels and the Prophets and the last day. Right? You have to believe that because of the law of non-contradiction. Allah is not going to contradict Himself. He says you have to believe in all five things. Then when He says, whoever believes in Allah enters Jannah, the implication is whoever believes in these five things. And this is just short for these five things. And the ayah for this is Surah 4, verse 136. I'm going to give you just a brief summary. Now I've laid down for you Okay, by Allah's permission, S some of the fundamental foundations and pillars.